Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video is going to be looking briefly at a first-hand investigation dot point that says plan, choose equipment or resources and perform a first-hand investigation or investigations to gather information and use available evidence to demonstrate the need for chlorophyll and light in photosynthesis. So in our last video, we had a look at the materials that were required for photosynthesis and we also had a look at the general word equation and we know that from the general word equation we need carbon dioxide and water but we need chlorophyll and light or sunlight in particular in order for photosynthesis to be able to create glucose and oxygen. So during this investigation we're going to have a look at exactly why chlorophyll and light are required. So what does it mean to be green? The aim of this investigation is to determine whether light is necessary for photosynthesis to take place. So a bit of an introduction. So as we know, photosynthesis produces sugars. However, in many plants, the sugars are quickly turned into starch. So plants use some of the glucose in order to carry out cellular respiration to create energy. However, the majority of the glucose that is created is converted into starch and then stored within the plants. We know that it's easy to test for starch using iodine solution. As we know from earlier in the patterns in nature topic, if we introduce iodine to a starch solution, it goes from that yellowy brown color to a blue black color. So therefore, to show that photosynthesis has occurred, we can test the leaves for the presence of starch using iodine. And if starch is present, the leaf will change from a, or the iodine, sorry, will change from a, a yellowy brown color to a blue black color. So in order to carry out this investigation, there's a few things that we need to do. So we first need to set up our leaves so we can actually compare between a leaf that has been exposed to sunlight uh, in comparison to a leaf that hasn't. So one way to do this is to use uh, paper clips to attach some dark cardboard or aluminium foil or some uh, opaque substance material to the leaf so that the sunlight can't get through. And then what we will do is after a 24-hour period or possibly even longer, we will go back and collect the covered leaf and an uncovered leaf from the same plant. So obviously we need to make sure that we uh, remove two leaves from the same plant in order to make sure that our uh, experiment is obviously fair and reliable. What we are then going to do is to boil that leaf in water on a hot plate and that, what that will do is help to break down the cell wall and allow us to then be able to test the uh, presence of starch using iodine solution. So when we uh, heat the leaf, it'll go really soft and smushy. And then we will put it into a test tube containing some ethanol or methylated spirits. That test tube will sit in a beaker of hot water, which will add, sorry, act sorry, as a water bath to heat the ethanol uh, up and that will continue to remove the chlorophyll from the leaf. What will actually happen is we'll see the methylated spirits turn a green color and the leaf will end up looking quite bleached. Then what we will do is we will lay the leaf out on a white tile or petri dish and then add our iodine solution and what we should see is the leaf that is uncovered should change from the iodine solution should change from a brownie color to the blue back color and our covered leaf should not have any real change because photosynthesis hasn't taken place over a period of time and the starch has been used to maintain the plant. So a few points to remember when carrying out this investigation. Uh, obviously we need to uncover the leaf that we've covered to be able to boil it and then place it in the methylated spirit. So you need to make sure that you mark one of your leaves so that you know which one was covered and which one was uncovered. For this investigation we're going to use a hot plate instead of a Bunsen burner to heat the water especially when we are using it as a water bath to heat the methylated spirits. Methylated spirits uh, fumes are very volatile, so they can catch fire very easily. So by doing that, it reduces that, that chance. Use metal tongs to remove the leaves from the water and the methylated spirits, obviously not our hands. We don't want to burn our hands. Methylated spirits has a very low boiling point, so it does get very hot quite quickly and ensure that the windows are open, the doors open in order to allow adequate ventilation to avoid us from inhaling the fumes as you, it can make you quite dizzy. So when we carry out the investigation, what we should see here 
is, as I said, when we add our iodine solution to our two leaves, we will see that one leaf, the iodine, would not change colour and the other should go a blue-black colour. And what this shows us is this leaf that hasn't had any colour change is our uncovered leaf. So this leaf was able to undergo photosynthesis continually. Uh, sorry, this was our, our covered leaf. So photosynthesis wasn't able to happen, so all the starch that was in the leaf was converted back to glucose in order to uh, provide the plant with the glucose necessary, necessary for cellular respiration. So the plant obviously wasn't going to die in that time. And this here shows our uncovered leaf. So yeah, yes, our uncovered leaf where photosynthesis was allowed to take place all the time. And because there was excess glucose being produced, that glucose was being converted to starch. So this here, just to try to make sure I haven't confused everybody, is our covered leaf where the glucose that was stored as starch is being used in order to stop the plant from dying by carrying out cellular respiration. And this here is our uncovered leaf where excess glucose was being created during the process of photosynthesis, was converted to starch and therefore turned the iodine the blue-black colour. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.